OK, so let's take a look at this right here. All right, so first of all, this is a second word problem, very similar uh, to, to the first one, except that this time, instead of a Ferris wheel, it's a windmill wheel. It's still something going up and down, up and down repeatedly over time. So here, OK, it says that the maximum height of 14 meters is at one second. So remember what we said yesterday, OK, we're going to have time on the X axis. I don't think there's ever an exception to that. If there is, we'll deal with it when it comes up, but I'm pretty sure time is always on the X axis. And if there is a uh, distance measurement, like a, like a height or something, that would be on the Y. So we can put height in meters on the Y. Now it's not always seconds and meters. You're gonna have some different units of measure, but there should be a time uh, measurement uh, to be one of your two uh, uh, variables in these problems. And we say that at one second, you reach a maximum height of 14. So we have a point right there at 114. That's the maximum height. And then we have a minimum height at two meters. And that is over here at nine seconds. That's just two points on the graph. And that's generally what's going to happen with all these word problems is you're going to get a max and a min point, and that's enough to sketch your graph because you know it's a sinusoidal function. So what you can do is, if you if you want to, what you can do is you can uh, just continue this pattern for a little bit. If you look at the, the horizontal distance, the difference between your max and min points at one second and nine seconds, that's eight seconds later. So you go from max to min in eight seconds. So another eight seconds, which will be at 17 seconds, you're going to go back to your height again. And uh, let me just drop that down just a little bit there. So at 17 seconds, you're back up to 14 meters. And if you wanted to, this is not uh, necessary for the problem, but you could actually continue this a little bit further. You could say another eight seconds at 25 seconds, you're back to a minimum and that pattern is going to continue forever. So you can continue the pattern indefinitely if you choose to, but you only need one period here. OK, so I'm going to make my graph. Like this. OK, and uh, it's going to look something like that. And next up, OK, now that we have the graph drawn, what we want to do next is we want to come up with a uh, equation for this. And the equation we can get from the mapping notation. So let's take a look right now at doing some mapping notation step first, all right? And this is similar to what we were doing yesterday as well. So first of all, we can look at getting the vertical translation, which is the sinusoidal axis. And the sinusoidal axis is in the middle at y is equal to eight. Now, once again, okay, if you can't get that right away, or if the numbers are weird decimal numbers, one way that always works to get the sinusoidal axis is to get the average of the max and min. So if you add up the max, which is 14, and the min, which is 2, you add them up and divide it by 2, you'll end up getting 8. That's something that will work every single time. So we have a sinusoidal axis of y is equal to 8, and our sinusoidal axis is equivalent to our vertical translation. So we have y plus 8 in the mapping notation. Then we have to get an amplitude, and the amplitude for this is going to be 6. Okay, If you look at the distance vertically between the middle and the minimum, so from 8 down to 2, you get a distance of 6, which is the amplitude, or from 8 up to 14. That's also a difference of 6. And if you're getting different uh, amplitudes for the top part or and the bottom part, then that means that your sinusoidal axis is wrong. So that's another way of checking that, all right? So we have a vertical stretch, vertical translation right here. And then next up, okay, what we need to do is we need to get the X values, which are a little bit more complicated. But here, okay, we can do it. The horizontal stretch relates to the period. We have a formula that says period is equal to 360 times the horizontal stretch. We're, we're using 360, so we're going to do degrees. You could use 2 pi. It's going to make things more complicated. 
And then when you do uh, the calculations in your calculator at the very end, you'll have to put your calculator in radian measure. I think a good way of proceeding with these is just to just use the rule of always using degrees for these word problems. OK, it's just going to make things a little bit easier. So we're using 360. The period of this graph is 16. Now, how do I get that period? Well, what I have here is I can look here at these two maximums from one to 17, the horizontal distance between those two, the difference between one and 17, those are 16 units apart. So that's how you can calculate the period given a graph. You can take the distance between two consecutive maxes, or if you went to the two minimums of nine and 25, it's the same thing. You get a difference of 16 for those. So our period is 16 and we need to solve for the horizontal stretch. So we have 16 over 360 is equal to the horizontal stretch. And there's nothing wrong with putting that in. OK, now when we get to word problems, uh, the, the period numbers are going to be a little bit less uh, uh, friendly numbers. OK, you're not really going to see 90 and 180 as much anymore. But it's OK because we're just using calculators to do these problems, so it doesn't even matter if you get into weird decimals. So if you want, you can put in 16 over 36 or sorry, over 360. Uh, just to make things a little bit simpler, we could reduce that fraction. OK, uh, if you reduce that fraction down, it reduces down to 2 over 45. If you divide the top and bottom by 8, or if you keep dividing them by twos for a few different times, OK, it'll come down to two over 45. So uh, either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the right answer in the end, whether you reduce or not. So it doesn't really matter, but I'll put in the smaller number of two over 45. Again, not a not a nice number, I guess, but but it's going to work. And then finally, we need to get our horizontal translation number. And uh, for these word problems, you can decide to use sine or cosine. It doesn't really matter. So if we were using sine, you would need the middle of the upsloping part, which is right here, which will be at 13. It's in the middle of the min and max. So if you use sine, you're going to do plus 13 in your mapping notation. I am going to use cosine. And cosine would use maximums. So I could use this one or I could go over to the 17. It doesn't really matter. You're going to get the same answer regardless of which which point you choose. So I'm going to choose plus one. And you don't have to write this in, but this is just reminding myself that that plus one, a maximum point, that means I'm horizontally translating the cosine graph. So I want to make sure in my equation I put in cosine. And next up, OK, what I need to do is take my mapping notation and make an equation out of it. So what I can do right here is I can say, OK, y is equal to and I have 6y plus 8 in the mapping notation. So I could have 6 and remember I'm using cosine. Plus 8 and in here all the x step. I want to switch up the numbers from the mapping notation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and it's x plus one in the mapping notation. So I'm going to use x minus one. And then when I go to uh, the horizontal stretch, I have to flip that over. So two over 45, that becomes 45 over two. Now, up to this point, we haven't come across any horizontal stretch numbers that look like that. They've always been like one half or one third, and this one's not so so friendly of a number. OK, and that's going to happen at some point during the word problems. But this is is one of several possible equations that you could get. And as long as your equation is correct, it doesn't matter which version you go for. You could have went for a sine equation if you wanted to. Uh, but we're not finished. We have to plug in a number for X and that's just using your calculator and doing the order of operations. So let's go back to our problem and see what we're asked. OK, the, the actual question that we're asked here is what is the height at 20 seconds? 
And of course, our time seconds is the X axis. So we want to plug in 20 for X. You'll always be plugging in for X. OK, we haven't done any where you plug in for Y. So if you plug in 20 for X, this is what we're going to have. OK, now that angle for for cosine, it's a bit messy, but your calculator is going to take care of it. So first of all, just a reminder that these word problems are in degrees. So you want to make sure before you put things into your calculator that your your calculator is in degree mode. And then from there, OK, what you want to do is focus on the inside of this first. OK, you don't want to do six times cosine. You want to get this angle simplified first and then get the cosine of that angle. We do the six and the eight after. So here, OK, uh, again, you can skip steps here if you want. I'm going to go through every step together. So I have the 45 over two. You can make that into a decimal if you want. If fractions are not your thing, certainly make that uh, 45 over two. You can make that into 22.5. And 20 minus one is 19. And then you can do 19 times 22.5. So you're going to have y is equal to 6 times the cosine of 427.5 plus 8. And then next up, OK, you're just going to use your calculator and get the cosine of that angle. So cosine of 427.5 in degree mode, that's going to give you y is equal to 6 times 0 0.3827. And now if you do the multiplication times that decimal by 6 and then add on 8, you're going to wind up with approximately now at this point, OK, notice that when I, I got the cosine of, of the angle, I rounded to four decimal places, but your final answer, you can go down to like one or two decimals. I don't think they specify exactly how many. All right. But this one right here, it looks like we can go with 10.3. And a Y value is in meters. So we'll stick with that. And when you're doing these problems, OK, particularly like on the assignment or anything like that, OK, if you uh, uh, maybe what you can do then is you can go back to your diagram and see, does this answer make sense? So. Notice here, OK, uh, let's just go back to this, this graph and at 20 seconds. 20 seconds is approximately right here. So and again, my my graph is not very uh, specific here, OK, you. Uh, I think my my wave is a little bit off here, so it looks like it's up at 14, but it's actually if I if I made my wave a little bit better here. It would be going downwards like that. So at 20, we should be over a little bit under 14, which makes sense. OK, a 10.3, that seems to make sense as an answer. And uh, the rest of these word problems that we're going to uh, start today, we're here for another 10 minutes so you can get started with these. And then when we join on Monday, uh, I'm not going to teach anything. I'm just going to let you have a half hour to work on some more problems and uh, perhaps I'll jump in and help out a little bit. But uh, you can get started on a Ferris wheel problem. And actually just one second here.